Have you ever been trying to determine the function of behavior for students who are really high level language? So kids, you know, that we work with sometimes have really, really high level language and you can reason with them. And sometimes by, you know, doing a functional analysis seems a bit silly. I mean, obviously as behavior analysts, we're going to do a functional analysis, but it may not necessarily mean contriving contingencies like Iwata because our high functioning learner will look at us and say, what are you doing? Why are you doing it like this? Um, sometimes you can just ask them, hey, listen, why are you doing that? Or how does it make you feel when? And if students can ask ask and answer those kinds of questions, you're dealing with a different type of learner than what you know who you're usually doing an FA with. Um, with that being said, you know if you're doing a different type of FA, you've also got to be doing a different type of behavior protocol. And with these kinds of learners, we need to take into account uh, perspective taking, theory of mind, uh, empathy. So you know sometimes you know from a non-behavior analytic point of view, I think if I could just reason with this kid, if I could just tell this person, you know, you can't do this because it makes other people feel like this, uh, then, you know, that's all we would need. Now, obviously, you know, we can't all wave our magic wands and have that happen. However, um, you know, it, it is really important to look at perspective taking theory of mind when you're teaching uh, higher students like this. Yeah, a lot of children really struggle with that concept of understanding abstract concepts that just because they don't see it, it doesn't exist, and that we know that things exist because we can see them. So theory of mind kind of expands on that concept and helps us teach kids that other people also understand things based on what they can see. We understand things based on what we can see. And we can build off of that to teach kids this sort of perspective taking. That it's not just important to do what I want to do because I feel like it, but we're trying to explain to them the why. Like, why is it important to have social skills? Why is it important to greet somebody when they come in? Um, some of the students I've worked with would just be like, I don't care. Like, you could offer me whatever reinforcement you want. Like, I just don't want to. Um but going a little bit beyond that and explaining to them, okay, it's cool that you don't want to, but here's the why behind it. And we can try to extend their theory of mind and their ability to take perspective and understand that when someone comes into the room and you don't greet them appropriately, it makes them feel uncomfortable and it makes them think that maybe you're having bad thoughts about them. And it kind of extends their thought bubble beyond themselves into understanding how it's affecting other people. And we can definitely take a behavioral perspective on how to teach this to our students. And this is where we're now starting to get into the realm of reinforcement, that it's not external reinforcement. It's not, you know, you do this because you get a token or you do this and you can get an extra however many points. It's about now, you know, you do this because it makes other people feel this way. And it starts to take that reinforcement and internalize it a little bit. Yeah, and um, using teaching techniques like role play, behavioral skills training, um, contingency maps, all of these things are some really great ways to use ABA programming and behavioral techniques to teach learners these kinds of skills.